94.3 The Dude is very grateful to our men and women in uniform. We're proud to recognize local members of our military by turning the spotlight on them right now in our Soldier Salute. I'm your host, Sergeant First Class Retired Don Sorensen, and on today's Soldier Salute, we're speaking with Sergeant Major Retired Doug LeVere of the United States Marine Corps. Doug, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a 30-year veteran of the Marine Corps, a Vietnam veteran, two and a half years. I've been riding motorcycles for about 55 years. I do anything related to veterans. I love veterans, obviously, and I love motorcycles, and the two seem to come together to begin with. I did my first ride in 1963. And in fact, in 1964, I bought a Honda 305, which most people have never even heard of. And I ran around the island Okinawa for about three days before I got sent to Vietnam. So (laughs) 18 months later, I came back and the bike was sitting right where I left it. And I sold it to the next guy getting off the plane for 15 bucks. So I really believe in biking. But biking and uh, and me, it's sort of my uh, way to relax. If I'm uptight or something, if I have memories I don't like or whatever, I can get on that bike and before I leave my driveway, I'm relaxed. And I, it's just a catharsis for me. Um, it's number one in my life is probably motorcycling. Leaving out family it would be motorcycling with the Run for the Wall and any other veterans events. Now, with veteran stuff, I'm a member of the Patriot Guard Riders, but I'll do escorts, I'll do funerals, I'll do welcome homes. As long as it's a veteran, I'm there. All it takes is a request. Retired, but I'm pretty busy with the stuff I do with the fundraising. So I can't just drop everything and go do things. When I plan it, that's it. It's going to happen. Doug, you're not going to believe this, brother, but my very first bike was a 305 Honda Dream. Hoorah. I mean, red with the uh, chrome side panels on the gas tank with the, the black rubber insert. I think, to, the, to this day, I think it's one of the most beautiful bikes I've ever owned. Uh, but I'm a little bit more of a casual rider than you are. From what I've heard, you put some serious miles on a motorcycle. Tell me about that. Well, just because I like to ride, I'll use any excuse to ride. I'll ride in any weather. I really don't care. Icy roads are out of the question, obviously, but but rain or snow, I don't care. 24-7, 365. Sometimes when it's raining, I'll intentionally go for a ride. Because when I'm doing my scheduled trips, if it rains, it means nothing. You, I take out a little squeegee and I squeegee my face mask or I squeegee my, my goggles. Rather, I squeegee the windshield on the bike. Most of my mileage comes about without me thinking about it. I'm a member of the Green Knights at Shaw. And those guys are amazing because they, they're a very, very good, good group of people. But a long ride to most people is, is a day ride, 150, 200 miles. When I was living in California, I'd go from San Francisco down to Oceanside to have lunch with the Marines down there. And that's 425 miles. And it's not a big deal to me. I, I realize it is to some people, but I'm so used to it. it. It's nothing. I was doing 35 to 45,000 miles a year up until about a year and a half ago. And then I relocated out here and had to slow down a little bit. And I got a woman in my life and it's a little hard to just say, get on the bike and go. Right now, I think I'm down to between 25 and 35,000 miles. It's a conscious thought. Um, and like I said earlier, if I get up in the middle of the night and, and I can't sleep, I go for a ride. I don't care. Doug, I am with you, my friend. I, I tell you, one of my favorite memories, when I was active duty, I showed up to my first NCO course. In the Army, they called it the Basic Non-Commissioned Officer course at that time, or BNOC. And that was in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> I rode out. On a Honda Valkyrie Interstate with right. my duffel bag or sea bag, as Marines call it, in the back seat. It seems to me that veterans and motorcycles are just such a good fit. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that motorcyclists have have that outreach for the veteran community? Well, I think most bikers that, that ride, not just the guys that go back and forth to work necessarily, but the bikers that ride do it because it's a freedom thing you get on the bike the only thing that controls your life on that bike is you i mean you can make stupid mistakes you can go too fast or fall over whatever but it's basically your freedom and unless you bike you don't understand what it's like to smell and feel the air and the country it's different i've had convertibles it's not the same thing i've had moon roofs and all the windows open not the same thing the bike you can do it Doug, you've got, a to me, a rather important event and ride coming up soon. You're headed to Angel Fire, New Mexico. Tell me about that. Angel Fire is the first Vietnam memorial in this country. It was built by a father for his son, a Marine lieutenant who was killed in 1968. You know, in 68, we lost over 15,000 Americans in just that year. So him building the m- memorial was really, really good. The first time I saw it was on the run for the wall. And the central route, we have three routes, goes through Angel Fire. And we go up there now, after every year's run is over with, a lot of the riders go up to Angel Fire to lay memorial bricks, which is what I'm doing this month. We've got 600 bricks. I didn't realize we had that many, but we've got 600 bricks to lay, 25 of which are from a friend of mine who was in Vietnam in 68 
Army lieutenant. They had been through a bad battle. They sent him off on R&R, and he was gone five days. And during the five days he was gone, he lost 25 of his people. So he asked me to go up and help him lay. And go for a ride is good to go. Go to Angel Fire, really good to go. Go to lay memorial bricks, no question. Doug, you know, I don't really care if someone puts me in a hole in the ground somewhere once I'm gone, but to have warriors, men who have experienced things that are going to to remember me in such a special way, I, I cannot imagine a more fitting tribute. And Angel Fire is not the only uh, tribute that you pay to our fallen veterans. Tell me about Run for the Wall. Run for the Wall started 30 years ago by a gunnery sergeant, James Gregory, Marine, who's retired and lives in Charleston. And he was in the last official battle of the war, Co Trang Island or the Mayaguez incident. Three of his people were left behind. When he came stateside, he decided to bring attention to POW MIA. He left San Diego with about 125 bikes and drove to Washington, D.C. Going through towns, all of these towns like to see us come through. Almost all of our food is donated across the country. Almost all of the fuel is donated across the country. So these small towns that we stop in, they're not making money from us. It might be a trade-off, but we're there because we want people to remember our fallen. I know a certain amount of names on the wall. In 2014, after I got done with the run for the wall, I did all lower 48 states. I, I just had to do it. I went to 67 Vietnam memorials. They're very, very unique. They're all grab your heart, and they all remind you of those that aren't there. Um, I called that ride the Never Forget Ride because that's the way I look at it. I will never forget the guys. I might not remember names because I don't remember my kids' names, but I'm horrible at names, but I'll remember them. On the run for the wall, we do 10 days. Almost every day, we stop at at least one memorial. We stop at middle school, and they're the tearjerk. Because these kids that weren't even born when I started doing run for the wall, I've been doing that for 13 years, and they're there to tell us thank you. And we try to remind everybody they're not thanking us. The heroes are the ones on the wall or the ones that haven't made it to the wall. I believe that there's a lot of Marines, I beg your pardon, a lot of military that have come home from Vietnam, but they just haven't got here yet. And that's part of what I do it for. At the wall, when we do the run, we go down to the wall on the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, and we look for names. We carry pictures all the way across of MIAs, and we leave them at the appropriate place on the wall. And it reminds everybody what we're there for. We don't want people to forget. Doug, regardless of the reason that you joined the military, whether it was for adventure, just to get away from your hometown, or to pay for college benefits, I think by the end of your career, almost everyone that's still wearing the uniform is doing it in the hopes that they're going to make a difference so that their children don't have to go through some of the things that we have. But inadvertently, they do, and you're still taking care of those guys by making sure that our combat heroes have accessible bikes that they can ride. Tell me about the Combat Hero Bike Build. The Combat Hero Bike Build started uh, uh, eight years ago, and it was started by uh, another Marine, John Barker, in Washington, Dowell, in Texas. They got together. I had known them. I had got them to contribute money for a bike that was being built in Southern California for a triple amputee. We were so excited by that that we felt we might be able to do a better job because we know what the requirements are. The guy that built the first bike was a great builder, but he's not a biker. So what he ended up doing was building a real nice, small, what we call bar hopper, and put a sidecar in it, because the guy's rescue dog is a great dame. So he needs a big platform for that little puppy. Um, he triple amputee, and yet we had to change controls from side to side. We had to take off all squeeze and make it push button or lever action. Uh, I shouldn't say we, they did that. As Soon as that was done, we said, why don't we do this on our own? And I'm only loosely involved now. I was with it for all the years, and then I finally, money raising is difficult, and it takes a lot out of the other things I want to do. So I just help them if they need the help, if they ask. If I run into people, I talk about it, obviously, and push people in their direction. It takes fifteen to $25,000 per bike, all donations. We've probably had a dozen bikes donated to us. People are no longer riding. They hear about it and say, you want the bike. And we take the bike on two bases. If we can rebuild it, that's what we do. If it can't be rebuilt or it's not the right type of bike, then we get them to agree that we can sell it. And all of the money, every cotton pick and penny goes right into that bike. None of the people that work for Combat Hero Bike Build take pay. Most of them pay out of pocket for everything. Uh, we try to pay for uh, maybe transportation or they try to pay for the booth space or whatever. No salaries. Doug, you know, 
One of the reasons that I'm still here in Columbia, South Carolina, is because of the amazing support that the people of Columbia, South Carolina, show to our veterans. Matter of fact, consistently, Columbia is ranked one of the number one places for veterans to retire in all of America. I know that I have listeners that want to be a part of this and that would like to be able to help. So if anyone out there would like to help Run for the Wall or Combat Hero uh, Bike Build, is there a place they can go to 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 make a donation or or volunteer time? Sure. To make it simple, they could go to my website, which is eaglewarriorsoneword.org. And that'll have my address on there, obviously. It'll have the Combat Hero link and it'll have a Run for the Wall link. They can also send money to me. They just need to specify what it's for. And every penny that comes in goes right to that project. I don't take pay. I pay for the website myself, et cetera. With the Combat Hero Bike Build, we do our one presentation every year at the beginning of Run for the Wall to keep them involved. And I think we do three right now a year. And that's more because we can they can only build so many at a time. We have a guy in North Carolina, one of the ministers, uh, ministry people, that he builds bikes up there. But the bulk of the bikes are built in Washington. And that's the only, if one in Washington gets paid, everybody else gets donated. So the money that comes in is phenomenal. Bikes, we hope that they're running. We want to modify them, not, you know, build them from the ground up. But I don't think we'll say no to anything. Doug, thank you so much, not just for your time in uniform, but what you continue to do for our veterans and our our warrior community. If anyone out there is listening, again, that uh, website is eaglewarrior.org. Check it out. If you want to donate, your donations would be greatly appreciated. Doug, thank you so much for being on the Soldier Salute. Thank you very much, and thank you for what you've done. Thanks for joining us in our Soldier Salute, presented by Little Pig's Barbecue. Serving Columbia since 1963 with that bodacious buffet. By Lexington Guns and Shooting Range. Veteran owned and operated. And by Carolina Honda Powerhouse. Motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides with discounts for all military personnel. And Dominion Energy. We depend on...